Hello. Is wanking bad for your eyesight? Something for you to think about. Experiment with. So I'm going to experiment with it. I mean, quite a long time ago I reduced my masturbating. And um, now, it's, now it's usually bath night, um, which is once a week for me. But um, I did... Uh, what what does usually happen is, so I've gone a week. You know, sometimes I've done two weeks, usually a week. But then, quite often I want. After having one, I want another one. <laughs> so, you know, is reducing it to once a week um, helpful? Well, I guess it's better. Well, you you know you jizz right. So you lose all those millions of sperm for a bloke. Or, and a woman, you know, their juices, whatever they contain, I don't know, it might not be as bad, but um, there's still things that the body needs to replenish. So it could be that uh, you, it uses similar things for your eyes and that... Um, your eyesight can be poor through ejaculating far too much. <laughs> Maybe. Because I've been trying to fix my eyesight for a while now. And the way I've been doing it is just by not wearing my glasses as much as possible. And I've got to be honest and say, I don't think my eyes eyes improved at all. Sometimes I can see really clearly, and sometimes I feel like my eyes are poor. So I'm going to experiment. They they feel quite good at the moment, and haven't jizzed since. When did I have a bath? Monday night. So it's only Friday. Yesterday I was getting really horny, um, and I wanted to go and knock one out, but I I decided not to. Anyway, um. So that's not really a serious matter, but it would be quite funny if if we found out it was. I bet a lot more people would start wearing contact lenses <laughs> to hide the fact that they need glasses. Who oh, are the blind people? Whoa! -ho! No, that was bad. I don't know. I haven't thought about it too too much. I mean, the blind is going to be probably something different. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Um, this video is about two things. It's about A.J. Miller's latest talks, all about the laws of God, which I think are pretty good, and recommend you watch them. I'm going to give you a, a kind of a short, you know, in a nutshell thing. And the thing about AJ, he is long-winded, but without his long-windedness, he'd never be able to have accomplished kind of managing to sort of really try and see the the big picture. I mean, it's a challenging thing, and and maybe he's forgotten a couple of laws or principles, but anyway, very interesting and very good. So that's one thing. So, but I'm going to start with um, things that I've been holding back from putting on video, mainly because I didn't want to.
tempt fate. So I felt these things and then I didn't want to make a video about it in case like it wasn't the case. Do you know what I mean? Sort of like put bad luck on it. So what I've held back Something that happened back in October, I think. So I was sitting there meditating, and um, this feeling came towards me, and it was negative, but really smart. Really smart. But it made me doubt everything you know me including god made me doubt god I had this so when a feeling came comes to me in my soul it's like i could shake out of it but then obviously i know it's not gonna go away so i usually make the decision let's go with this and um so this feeling came and i went with it and uh, yeah, it just it was just making me doubt everything. And my um, at the time, what I was think I was thinking, I suppose, about the beast and the devil and and things like that. Um, well, I came to the conclusion that what I'd felt was the devil. But what I'd been thinking before about the beast and something, I'd come to the conclusion that it was not a person. That um, God isn't going to leave any of his children behind. That, but that a devil, the devil, did exist. And um, What I believe it is, is through our sin over the last 6,000 years, we've kind of created like a, a new aspect of God, in a sense. Because when I say this thing's clever, it like knew everything, like, like it had the knowledge of God. And so my understanding was what we'd created was something with God's personality and knowledge and intelligence, but a negative aspect. Right. But through me having felt this and got through it, somehow after that somehow was locked away you know, maybe for as long as I live I don't, know. I don't know so that was that so that happened back in October and then towards the end of November which I have said about I had these really strong feelings about being hugged by God basically feeling God so closely that I'm like enveloped in God, like an envelope. But I said that anyway, I'll put that in a video. And uh, what was it happened the next day? Oh yeah, and I'm not sure if I did include this, but I might have done it at a later time. Um, suddenly the realization that there are other people in maybe other universes and the, and the, and the the enormousness of that hit me. I felt that really big. But I think I have mentioned that. So I wasn't holding that back. Right, so then we come up to about a month ago. You know, for the last few months, probably. I did say in one of my videos, um, the whore of Babylon or something that and that's yet that's yet to come that's something still to be dealt with and I do feel now it has been dealt with 
and that she has gone with God like Lucifer did sort of nine months ago or something and like many spirits are who've been in a dark place are going with God that's my feeling so what what the the old whore of Babylon was doing like um and I don't suppose she was just doing this to me and doing it to a lot of people but she could add to the lust so you think of a girl who's maybe a bit easy a bit up for it and that would be a prime prime subject for the whore of Babylon to give her extra power, extra oomph. And the way I dealt with her is basically I knew I wasn't going to like, well none of them, I, anyway I just took it like whatever you're doing is part of the plan of God. In some ways, by tempting, you're helping. And the main thing, though, was now that I recognise the feeling of you, now, now it's very much more difficult to trick me because as soon as I feel your feeling, then I'll notice you, and then I'll think, yeah, I don't want to do that because I'm being forced to. So. So I was not any longer so easily to be led and <clears throat> like I put across to her, you know, wh whatever it is she does is part of the plan of God. Whatever she's done, obviously God had meant for it to happen and I think that helps spirits who have done dark things because then they they don't dread the recompense so much because in a way they're kind of just playing the part anyway so she eventually came back and I felt as if she'd gone to God so that's positive I think and since then when I when I've had a feeling from a woman and it's like so love can come from a woman and you know it might be still sexual in their minds but that just might be how they how they expect love to be returned or st stuff like that but what I mean I've done I did this before as well but what I have noticed is you begin not to respond sexually and you respond with your heart instead and that allows their love to kind of travel up to the heart rather than just staying in the groinal area and it it's much longer lasting because it, let's say yesterday I had just gone and knocked one out you know that would have been it that would have been over and it would have been like one up to you got power over me sort of thing um, but by not doing that, kind of the, the love was much longer lasting and getting to know this person just through the feelings that are coming towards me, it's, it's sort of, yeah, much more rewarding. But yeah, it still can be tempted, it, you know, it, it just any sort of feeling going in the groinal area is going to tempt you into that carnal thing and obviously if you want to fix your eyesight then you don't really want to do that right and in my last video I did mention I think January the 25th or did I? I don't know I'll just say it again <laughs> January 25th I felt an emotion that's been in me for 38 years something like that and 
it was the first emotion that I had stopped, that I'd suppressed. So at that point, I was basically going away from God. It was a big thing, and worked it out, and so it must be good, it must be good. Um, as for things manifesting in my physical universe, the day after that, someone basically offered me a thousand pounds a month for doing nothing. <laughs> but I think it must have been a joke. I don't know, so, I don't know. Rich people are funny. I've had some customers in the past and it's like they care way more about finishing up. It's like they've got to fuck you over on the last. If they've decided or whatever, someone's decided that the relationship's over and no longer going to do business, they have to like end it with them trying to fuck you over. So I don't know if this guy was just trying to, I mean I was very wary anyway, anyone who offers you a thousand pounds a month for doing nothing, you've got to be wary. <laughs> and in a sense I shouldn't let it tempt me so much anyway because God will provide for me no matter what. You know, I've got to do my thing and if I had a thousand pounds a month for doing nothing, that would probably just make me lazy anyway, so it probably wouldn't be good. And there was some talk of it being something to do with bad debt, so probably I just don't want to go there, but I'm beginning to suspect maybe he's like just trying, you know, he's never going to see me again, perhaps he did say something about moving, so just wanted to get something in there, it's a bit puzzling, anyway, so that kind of happened the day after I felt this big emotion, but Really, when, when looking at, you know, the divine truth stuff and the saying, well, you know, if you change your soul, your world will change. And it doesn't require anything physical for your world to change. It can just be your outlook which makes your world change. Being a little bit happier makes your world change. But because we go through natural ups and downs anyway, see that's why it's important to know the moon cycle. So now at the moment we're coming up to a full moon. Um, men are still on the way up and will be until the moon is half going. And women are on the way, on the way down. So we've passed the crossing point at the coming half moon. We passed that crossing point, men are up. So if you know where you are in the moon thing, it enables you to figure out uh, am I getting better or am I getting worse? Because obviously if you're on the up anyway, you'll be get, going up anyway. But it's not all, I've noticed always, it's not always as big, you know, sometimes it's a bit shallow or whatever. But it's, it's definitely there, I think it definitely helps to know. Because otherwise, you, if you're on the up anyway, and say you did a new thing, and then the next day you felt a bit better, and you think, that must be right then, but it might not be, because you were on the up anyway. Am I making myself clear? Is there anyone... <laughs> Is there anyone who understands me, man? <clears throat> I try. So is there anything else I've been holding back? I don't think so. I think you've got it all. It's the night. It's the night. You are for real. I need some love like I never needed love before. Why is that song in my head? The old Spice Girls. So, might as well do this now. So it's all pretty good, isn't it, really? I mean, good times are here. 
I mean, I don't know what's going on with Trump. Like, uh, people have mentioned about his tendency to bluff. So I still think we need to give him a bit more time. We need to see what, uh, uh, what he does in regards to Israel. I think that's a big thing. Um, anyway, that's somebody else. Right, so, AJ's done this latest set of videos. It is a bit, we've got a bit of new information. Um, there are seven Earths, apparently. <laughs> and there is, I feel, some truth in that. Right, yes, I did, the last video I made, I was mocking AJ, saying, God is infinite. Now, I think, really, time and infinity is a little bit beyond our comprehension, intellectually. And the heart definitely feels it differently than the brain. So, I think it's, but I have felt some truth in saying that God is infinite. I have felt that. I think what maybe I've been doing lately, and I think AJ's helped me here get a bit more on the, closer to the truth, is I've been looking at God and thinking God's got brothers and sisters, God's got a mum and dad. And really that is just way beyond my comprehension. And what it was making me do was making me see God as a s smaller than God is. So I was uh, under, what do you call it, underestimating God. Yeah, naughty, naughty. <laughs> and so I think in, in terms we may as well think that God is infinite. Because we're in God and we can't see, if you like, past that. And that's enough anyway. I mean, I can wait 10,000 years for a few answers to questions that really don't massively matter. In this, but in a sense, for me, I was, it was giving me this tendency to underestimate God, which probably wasn't helping me feel God. So, so, thanks to AJ. But every time I hear Mary call him Jesus, I, I have a little shudder. <laughs> so you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. If God didn't have a name, then why does it say in the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name? Why is there this thing about the name? And why did Jesus say thank you for the... Um, John seventeen eleven, I think. Thank you for the power of the name that you've given me. Right. So. So we're looking at this infinite God. That's our mother and father. And so AJ's drawn this sort of picture of the universe, if you like. And you've got God's universe where the souls are. And he's put principles and laws around each universe in some sort of sense that they are a universe, but, you know, that does it. So we've got a universe and it's surrounded by principles and laws which govern it, which, which makes sense, you know, that's good. So, but what he's done is he's, he's, uh, he's tried to look at, you know, what are the principles, what, what are the principles of God, and who, who knows if he's missed a few out, we don't know. So it starts with foundation principles, and that there are eight of these. And the first two, they seem to go in pairs. The first two is love and truth. Now, they were saying about uh, love and truth being so entwined, and truth being the framework of love. I mean, they were really just avoiding saying truth is the foundation of love. Because then it would be obvious that he's just kind of watching my videos for new information and fitting it in like he just thought of it. Because it's so much simpler just to say that truth is a foundation of love. It's so easy. You can think, right, yeah, you know, I've got this 
sandy base you couldn't build anything on. And I get a bit of truth. Plonk, there's a bit of foundation for a bit of love to be built, right? <laughs> that that seems so much simpler to me. Now obviously you couldn't have truth without love, but you know, you couldn't have anything without love. So I mean in a sense, love is all there is, but so is truth, and I suppose they are intertwined. Anyway, let's not argue about <laughs> these little things. I just think it's quite easier to understand truth being a foundation, and then you can build love. Get 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 your truth first, isn't it? In a way. Okay, so I mean, we obviously know love in its vastness. So we could talk about that for ever. And truth is pretty plain, simple, truth is truth. So the next two principles is life and development. So all of God's principles are basically that life can flourish and and develop. Um, you know, there are... what I think what's handy, knowing the laws, it's sort of... Suddenly you think of something and you can quickly see if what you're thinking is in line with these principles. And if not, then it's, you know, then it's not in God's way. So, you know, you'll be breaking the law if if you do it. And these, and these laws are... In a sense, he did make a point at the end that you don't need to know any of these laws. The way the way God has made everything, that a child could progress quite well. Yeah. Uh, next two principles: economy and function. And God's economy is, in a sense of um, abundance with no waste. Oh, very clever. Very clever. Because, you know, I, someone brought us up before how God is abundant, but then I thought, myself, you know, um, God wouldn't be wasteful. So it's a way of being efficient without being tight. <laughs> Quite difficult. Um, what you say about function principles, you know, everything will have a function. In fact, probably everything has more than one function. So... You know, and I, I, when I've made things before and I've managed to make something that, oh, and also I can do this with it. You know, it's a good feeling, isn't it? So, it's good. So all everything God creates will be multifunctional, which is good to think of as well. If you think, you know, why is that tree in my garden? Um, yes, I believe you can eat the berries, but why? why is the thing full of thorns? And I thought, actually, hmm, those thorns could be quite handy. If you if you only had nature to rely on, uh, that thorn could aid sowing somehow. Um, yes, you could use it for hunting, not that we want to be hunting. And I even wanted to see if I could get a thorn and uh, bang, it, bang it into wood. <laughs> A little bit of the thorn does go in, but then as soon as it's about that far in, give it another whack and it, and it breaks. Now then maybe there's things you could do to harden the thorn. You might be able to bake it in the fire a bit. I don't know, that probably would make it softer. But, you know, I'm sure if I spent a bit more time, there'd be other uses, um, of course, loving uses. So... To sort of to look into um, that multifunctional. See, I just thought of another principle or law. I mean, maybe cooperation. I don't believe that's here. So, because I see nature cooperates. It doesn't. It does may appear to be competing, but it's actually cooperating for the big whole. Anyway. And the next two foundation principles is permanence and scope. So 
kind of anything God does is permanent. And scope's all about um, the complexity of the thing. And the more complex it is, uh, the higher it is. And we'll get on to hierarchy next. <clears throat> So the, the example that AJ was using throughout this was um, for scope, he was saying, well, you've got an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom. They're governed by laws. And when they connect together and make water, now they're a more complex thing. They're governed by higher laws, blah, 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 blah. And you, we've got water in us, and so every thing that goes on in our bodies, and then and that us, uh, the human soul is the most complex creation that God has made. So that kind of shows how important the soul is. And so what I found is good about this soul, uh, these principles that he said about, is that, okay, so I'm meditating and I'm feeling my soul. And then I have to like, you know, I have to keep believing that, yes, this is worthwhile and, Yes, I could be doing something here. So when um, AJ explains these principles, and you do see how everything fits in, and then that gives me a bit more confidence that, yes, I am actually doing something, and I'm doing something with my soul. And the feeling I get is there's nothing better than I could, that I could be doing, even making these stupid videos, and, and that feels like truth. Right, so we get on to the next set of principles, which is order principles. And there's four of these. And to me, these kind of all sort of clink into one, um, in, in a sense. But let's go through them. Um, and these are about how the soul affects things. Okay. So we've got hierarchy, governance, responsibility and compensation. So the hierarchy there, like you got you got you can work out hierarchy from scope, but he's saying any time um, a bit of God's love comes into somebody's soul, that makes them and they have some sort of transformation goes on, um, that makes them more complicated than the next man and therefore puts them in a higher condition and their soul will kind of govern or, you know, say to the other souls around hey look I'm the one in charge here you know but with humility I guess just you know. governance so that is then you know things that are higher up kind of govern things that are lower down responsibility yeah you see I don't I mean I I can't even remember the talks but responsibility the way I see that is basically you understand that everything that happens in your life is kind of a reflection of what you are doing so you know you can't sort of just moan oh I stepped in shit oh why me and you know and just moaning about it just accept it you know you stood in shit there must be a reason why and then uh, lastly compensation so yeah, that's pretty straightforward isn't it you get you get your karma you get your karma uh, <clears throat> then we've got human soul specific principles now this was pretty good this is pretty good and again we've got four now he started with will and desire and I felt he could have and he did in the end basically the way to explain will and desire is to explain the differences between them and your will is now your will is what you feel like doing or your state right now. That is your will. 
your desire is where you want to go. So, if you're if you're in a good state, right, and you start desiring lower things, you'll be breaking the laws specific to your human soul, and you'll feel a penalty for that. Again, if your will is in, actually it doesn't matter what sort of state, and your desire, let's say your desire is not to change, then you'll stay the same, and that probably, yeah, you can go back and say, well that breaks the law of development. So you'd feel a penalty for that. But if your desire is to improve, that is enough to actually get a reward. If it's a true heartfelt desire that you want to get in a better place, you'll feel a reward for that even. And that's that's really interesting. And that's really something that can that can be done in meditation. I've already been feeling things about it. And um, so when you suddenly do have a desire to be more loving, it feels good. It feels good. And and also just to you know not and you made a good point here as well. Not to worry about failing. If if you want to try something, just try it, and don't worry if you fail. I mean. And the fact that if you had good intention and there was a desire to improve, um, do you know what I mean? You'll feel good for it and you'll learn from whatever you do anyway. So, yeah, just do it, baby. Okay, and then we got redemption. So, that's kind of coming into repentance, I suppose. You know, you've got to, you've got to understand that you've... And he talked a lot about here about natural redemption and sort of godly redemption. So what he was saying is, without God, what would happen is your emotions would build up and up and up. And then like a, a steam vent would suddenly get blown out. And probably it would require something in your life, like a car crash or something like that. But do do it with God, and 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 you know God can like redeem you when when you kind of ask God to help, and yeah, you've got to ask. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. And then transformation. So there's a principle of transformation, and that's what comes after the repentance, progress, and with your desire, you can transform. Anyway, like I said, it was just a total nutshell. I mean, there, there is part of me that thinks, to a certain point, AJ could have done his whole talk in one day and just given people the information. But if he wants to take a week, it takes a week, you know, I mean, drag it out. And I think that's the reason he does do that, because he likes to be meticulous. He he likes to make sure that no one can confuse what he says. I don't do that at all. You know, I just speak willy-nilly, get it off my chest, it's on video, whack it on YouTube, okay, done. Because um, what I think is going to evolve anyway, hopefully. But, you know, so... So I, I can understand how how he does it the way he does it. Um, so I think yeah, there's a lot of lot of good foods for thoughts. And he said about there being seven earths. That was very interesting. And he also said something about the physical body um, replaces every cell after a period of seven years. And apparently the spirit body does this in seven hours. So that's something to think about, but I don't know about that. 
Yeah. So that's that. I haven't watched the second lot. I don't really want to watch both of them back to back sort of thing. I don't he might have included some little bits of info but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, I'm feeling a bit funny today. A bit, yeah, not quite on it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I doubt anyone's watching this far anyway. I don't know if anything's going to happen. I mean, I noticed when I made a long video and then I sort of thought, oh. it's a good way to do it, just to, just to feel like, who cares? And then stuff comes out. But when you try and force it or write it down, it just doesn't happen. But anyway, I think I said what I wanted to say. I just really wanted to get those things out so so that they're out. Because when someone else tries to take the credit for what I've done, I can say, no, look, look did this video. And when I say what I've done, what God, God's done it. God is doing it. God is doing it all the time. But yeah, that's enough. Okay, ciao.